Hello, this is Dr. Ryan Kazemi. In part one of this series, we discussed application of marsupialization or decompression in management of large cysts. In summary, marsupialization is used to decrease size of odontogenic cysts, making it more manageable when enucleated and grafted. We also presented a patient with a large expansile maxillary odontogenic kratocyst, which was marsupialized using the technique shown in that video. So now we'll take a look at the outcome of the marsupialization in that patient and how it was further managed. Here we see the initial presentation of the cyst extending from the distal of the first molar to the tuberosity region and superiorly into the sinus with either a perforation or perhaps an extremely thin border of bone. A rigid drain was inserted and it was stabilized with an interdental wire to maintain the opening to the cyst. And here is the patient about six months later with a remarkable decrease in the size of the cyst and increased bone deposition at its periphery. We can also note that the drain has remained securely in place after six months. And here's the patient at 10 months showing a continued shrinkage of the cyst and a more defined surrounding bone. What's most significant uh, is the remarkable reduction in vertical dimension of the original cyst, while we note a lesser degree of reduction uh, in its size from uh, the anterior to posterior dimension. So if we compare the cyst at the initial presentation and at six months, and then again at 10 months, we can certainly appreciate the degree of this cyst reduction in its size. During this period, a patient was instructed to rinse several times daily and no antibiotics was used except for the one week post-operative period at the time of the marsupialization. With significant decrease in the size of the cyst and an improved bone barrier superiorly between the cyst and the maxillary sinus, we can now plan on the definitive treatment consisting of extractions and enucleation of the cyst. Having a smaller defect and a more defined surrounding bone, the enucleation can be done much easier and more predictably as the improved superior wall of the cyst makes it easier to enucleate it as well as graft it. So at this time, we can proceed with the extractions of the teeth and the enucleation. First, we'll cut the interdental wire holding our rigid drain in place, which is then uh, easily removed. Next, we'll extract the teeth atraumatically. It's vital that the teeth are not subluxated buccally as the bone is very thin and can be damaged uh, quite easily. So we'll mobilize the teeth with a distal and superior elevation technique and carefully remove the teeth with a forceps. Here we can appreciate the extraction site and the cystic lesion apically. While it's much easier to enucleate the cyst using the buccal window, if possible, it's better to access it from the extraction site in order to preserve the buccal plate. For this, I'll use a range of curettes and sinus lift instruments to gently enucleate the cyst and remove it completely from the site. Uh, we recall uh, that the cyst as it was biopsied initially, was an odontogenic kratocyst, which can have a higher incidence of recurrence. Hence, uh, in this case, it's important to extract the teeth and perform a peripheral ostectomy to remove the um, associated daughter cells that might be present. Alternatively, a carnoise uh, solution has also been used for this purpose. For the peripheral ostectomy, I'll use uh, the pisotome, which allows effective access to the cystic wall for gentle ostectomy while avoiding perforation into the sinus. And if necessary, uh, one can also use a large round diamond burr to access uh, the difficult areas. And here's a site after the peripheral ostectomy has been completed and now ready for grafting. For bone grafting, we have already prepared a PRGF and mineralized freeze-dried bone complex, 
which will pack into the site until completely filled. A somewhat firm pressure is placed on the bone to assure proper placement and density of the bone graft material in all areas of the defect. We'll then uh, cover the bone with a resorbable collagen membrane and then cover that with our PRGF membrane as an occlusive dressing. Depending on the amount and quality of the soft tissue, a primary closure can be achieved, although not absolutely necessary. I found that the addition of the PRGF membrane, uh, we can stimulate the soft tissue maturation and achieve granulation and secondary intention um, relatively uh, well. A post-operative CBCT is recommended to make sure that there are no voids or areas of possible residual cysts left. Here we can appreciate that the complete removal of the cyst has been achieved and the bone is uniformly packed into all areas. We'll allow the site to heal for about six months uh, before implant placement. In summary, the marsupialization or decompression technique has been shown to be an effective technique in managing large cysts. It has been used for various odontogenic cysts with reports in the literature showing uh, favorable outcomes. The key aspects in success of this technique is an initial biopsy for diagnosis, using a rigid and stable drain achieving marsupialization or decompression for at least six to 12 months, and of course the compliant patient that can keep the site clean and follow up for close observation.